Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video as my reviews of the Marvel Legends Space Venom Builder Figure Wave roll on with Spider Bitch. On one side of the packaging we see Silk and then on the opposing side Spider Bitch herself as the two share the same packaging under the banner of web slinging heroines. Bit dubious as Spider Bitch is as likely to traffic heroin as she is to be one. These fierce females fight for justice with quick reflexes, super strength and classic web slinging action. Not sure the bio best encapsulates this character as fierce, certainly, but as for fight for justice, by that term I picture leaving a criminal webbed up hanging from a lamppost to face the full force of the law, and not face the full force of a shotgun swung at the neck to cause decapitation as she did the poor kingpin. But I guess that's vigilante justice, right? Then the packaging back shows Silk alongside Spider Bitch and the eagle-eyed among you will notice it doesn't refer to her as such, but Spider Girl instead, which has led many of you to ask, <coughs> which I will address. But first, let's take in the Space Venom Builder figure of this wave and the action figures you will need to collect to build him are Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Electro, Silk, Spider Bitch, or Girl as we have here, and Hobgoblin. So here is Ashley Barton out of packaging, and whether you refer to her as Spider Bitch or Spider Girl, I've been asked by quite a few people to talk about just who she is. And further still, I've been asked why I'm referring to her as Spider Bitch when the packaging clearly refers to her as Spider Girl. And no, that's not something I came up with on my own, although I wish it was. They are, in fact, the words comic writer Mark Millar used when he introduced the character into the alternate future in which his Old Man Logan storyline was set. Where she has some pretty good superhero pedigree, being both the granddaughter of Peter Parker Spider-Man and also the daughter of Clint Barton Hawkeye. So with a name like Spider Bitch and with performing decapitations with blunt objects, you get the picture that she ain't your normal Spider Girl or Spider Woman. Which was sad when she would be reduced to just that in the Spider-Verse storyline that sucked Spider characters from various alternate continuities, including Ashley Barton here renaming her to the more family-friendly Spider Girl. Yet some sass still comes through in the costume design that flashes a bit of flesh, I mean only bare shoulders, which might only shock Queen Victoria over a hundred years ago, but nonetheless it's significant for a spider costume that is usually an entirely body covering suit. As with the various spider characters we've got of late, for the most part she features some really nice crisp line work when it comes to the webbing pattern, and then the spider symbol on her chest, I like the way its legs curve round the contour of her, um, boobs? I do think her neck is a little long, or maybe the head just sits oddly on the neck, and that's kind of accentuated by her having shorter hair. I think if she had long hair, that would help diffuse the length of the neck. Not that I don't like her having shorter hair, as I like that about the character. That, combined with her various ear piercings, just gives her that little bit of an edge. And if her skin tone does leave you wondering, she is mixed race. Now looking at her articulation and the head rotates side to side, and this is where having short hair and a long neck benefits her as she's able to look down plenty, and then she's able to also look up a real good amount. Then while negligible on many an action figure, her head does feature quite a considerable side to side tilt, meaning you can get some cool quizzical looking poses going on. At the shoulder, her arms rotate and they move up to just slightly more than a right angle to the body. There's rotation at the elbow and effectively a single jointed hinge. And then at the wrists, her hands rotate and their hinge moving down and also up. No waist rotation, but in lieu of that, she has a rotating diaphragm joint and this also crunches this far forward and then this far back. And like her head, it actually features quite a considerable side to side tilt too. At the hips, her legs don't especially move very far out, but they do move much further forward and, well, very slightly back. There's upper leg rotation, followed by a double jointed knee. Then at the ankles, her feet are hinged, moving backwards and forwards, and she has that crazy ankle rocker pivot that I love. And taking advantage of that ankle rocker pivot, with this being her widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor. Alas, Ashley Barton is the only one in this wave to come without an accessory or interchangeable part, but to compensate for that, she does come with the largest Venom Builder figure piece. So accessory wise, it's up for you to improvise. Here I'm using a gun accessory from I don't know where, something I've acquired from over the years. And the plastic of her open right hand is quite pliable, making it quite flexible for any accessory you may want to uh, squeeze in there. 
All things considered, and I love her. Might be some of her spirit from the comics rose tinting my look at the action figure, but I don't think entirely. And yes, her release does indicate Old Man Logan is on Hasbro's radar, so I don't think that version of Wolverine is too far away. Anyway, click the video on the left if you missed my previous review featuring Hobgoblin, and stay tuned as Electro will be our final stop on the road to looking at our Space Venom Builder figure. Please give this video a big thumbs up because I've got a shotgun and I ain't afraid to swing it. And I hope to see you all next time. Mm, bye.